All right, what is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast, real estate tip, where every single week I come to you delivering different tactics, tips, and strategies to help you get shit done inside your real estate business and help you ensure that you are crushing and dominating your overall real estate goals. All right, so today I'm here to talk to you about why I do not believe that interest rates coming down are going to have much of an impact on what we're seeing in the overall real estate market and why I believe that 2024 is going to be a lot like 2023 when it comes to this very low transaction volume climate. And the reason why I'm bringing this up here on this podcast today is I'm, I'm hearing so many in our industry talk about, oh man, interest rates are coming down. They just continue coming down a little bit more. Man, we're going to have a flood of all these new buyers coming in and buying all this property. We're going to have a flood of you know sellers that are finally willing and able to go out there and list their properties. And it's going to be the end of this listing gridlock and the, the, the solution to this overall low transaction volume climate and all of this. And, and look, do I, do I subscribe to that theory? Do I buy into that? No. Right now, I do not have a crystal ball. I'm not saying that it's not a possibility. I'm not saying that it won't happen. I'm not saying that it can't happen. I don't have a crystal ball. Nobody does. None of us know exactly how this is going to shake out. However, I'm not prepping for it. I, I'm sorry. I'm not planning for it. And I don't recommend that you do either. Now, I'm going to walk through some of the reasons as to why I believe that 2024 is going to look a lot like 2023. We might have a slight uptick in transaction volume, you know. Um, but I'm still. I mean, everything that we're seeing right now and all the overall KPIs, all the key leading indicators, are showing me that 2024 is going to look a lot like 2023. But that doesn't mean that your business needs to be down. Your business, like 2024 can be and should be the best real estate market of your entire career, the best year of your career. And I'm going to go most importantly into what you need to focus on and what you need to be doing here in 2024 to ensure that you grow, scale, and thrive regardless of what the overall market is doing. So I'm going to break this down here, but real quick before I do so, look, if you are a real estate agent, if you are a team leader, if you are a brokerage owner, and maybe your business is not exactly where you want it to be. Maybe your business is declining. Maybe it's stagnant. Maybe it's growing, just not growing at the pace that you want it to be growing at. Maybe your business is down here, but you know your full potential is way up here. You just do not know exactly what to do to get from where you're at to where you want to be. If that is you, I invite you to schedule a 100% free Zoom coaching call with me personally. Here's what we're going to break down in this one hour long Zoom call together. Where your business is currently at what your 12-month goals are, what your long-term goals are, what you are currently doing, what your biggest obstacles are. Then from there, I'm going to map out exactly what I recommend that you do to get from where you're at to where it is that you want to go in the quickest, most effective, efficient, profitable manner possible. And I can promise you this, by the end of this one-hour-long Zoom coaching call, you are going to know exactly what you must do to get from where you're at to where you want to go. We're going to remove all that confusion all that overwhelm, I'm going to give you full clarity on what you must be doing. It's like you're going to be a horse with the damn blinders on. So you're going to know exactly what to do to get from where you're at to where it is that you want to go. So if that's something you want to take advantage of, go to www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. Now, full disclosure, I'm going to spend the first 50 minutes going through everything I just said there. The last 10 minutes, I'm going to spend a few minutes walking through what my coaching program is, what it entails. And look, if it's a fit for you, great. If not, that's okay too. We can still be friends. Everything I do, zero pressure. So again, if it's for you, cool. If not, that's okay too. Here's, here's what I can promise you. And you have my 100% word on this. Whether you ever move forward with my coaching or not, I promise you that I will get you dialed in. I got your back. You will not leave this coaching, this free Zoom call with not knowing exactly what you must do to get from where you're at to where it is that you want to go. Again, you have my word on that. So if you want to take advantage of that, www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. Okay, so why do I not believe that these low like if interest rates drop down even significantly? You know, let's just say one or 2%. Why I don't believe that there's going to be this flood of new people coming in. And look, whether this takes place or not, I'm going to walk you through most importantly of what you need to be focusing on to ensure you're crushing it and killing it in this current market climate. Um, but here, here's the reason being. Here, here's why I say this. Okay, let's first, uh, there's just a, a few key things that I think are really important to pay attention to and understand what we got going on here. Okay, let's first talk about where we are at right now. Okay, so we are at the most unaffordable time to be alive as a U.S. citizen. This inflation problem that we're experiencing is fucking massive. 
It's on a magnitude of scale that a lot of people don't truly realize. We feel it, we're seeing it, you know, but we don't, we're, you know, because the data that we get presented to us is so manipulated. And I'm not saying that is a negative thing. Oh, there's evil, you know, like whatever, like it just is what it is. And we have to just have a, an understanding of awareness of how shit is and how shit works, you know? Um, but I know I'll, I'll, I'll you know, expand a little bit more on inflation here in a minute, but we got this inflation problem that is not going away anytime at all soon. So let's just say we have another, you know, decade, like, like how much life has went up the last four years. Okay. Everything I'm seeing out there, okay, this is probably, we're probably going to be experiencing this for, you know, I don't know, five years, best case, but probably more like 10 years, you know? So, okay, life continues to go up. Let's just say 10% year over year. I know we're being told that it's only going up 3% a year now. They got control. Oh, the Federal Reserve won the inflation fight. It just went up 3%. Okay, did your life just go up 3% in 2023? Like, no, yeah, I mean, if anybody's paying it, 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 it all remote attention to this, Anybody that's paying uh, any any element of attention understands that their life did not just go up three percent. You know, I was talking with somebody that I know the other day that is on Social Security, and here here's something to understand, right? So back in the '90s during the Clinton administration, they they readjusted how they calculate CPI. Um, you know, so when we get these comparisons of oh, well, inflation's the highest that it's been since the '70s or the early '80s, it's like okay. The only way we can really make those comparisons if we were to calculate inflation the same way they were calculated back then, but it's been changed. The model's been changed, so manipulated now, you know, right? So, and one of the reasons to being is that based on, the, you know, the CPI print, that is how Social Security is adjusted. Okay, so I'm talking with, a, you know, somebody that I know that's on Social Security the other day, and they're like, because, you know, they're whatever, whatever, whatever the CPI print was, I don't really pay attention to it because I know it's all fabricated bullshit. So why, am I, why do I pay attention to a number that knows just a lie anyway? But they're like, oh, you know, let's just say it was 3.5% or whatever for last year. They're like, okay, their social security went up $85 on a monthly basis. And they told me that that doesn't even cover the cost. That only, that, that, that only covers the cost of the increase of one of their utility bills. But they're like, that doesn't cover the cost of my other until utility bill increases. That doesn't cover the cost that my insurance went up on my house. That doesn't cover the cost of all my food increases or, or gas or whatever else. Yeah, right. So again, whose life only went up 3%. So if you look at all the things going on with monetary policy, with fiscal policy, all the geopolitical moves taking place, everything taking place right now is massively inflationary. So we can be told that that the powers that be are fighting inflation and, are, and they've got this solved. They're doing everything they can to solve it. But I'm not going to listen to what they're saying. I'm going to watch what they are doing and every move that is possibly taking place that impacts inflation, monetary policy, fiscal policy, and all the geopolitical moves and social programs and the expansion of all of those, all highly, highly inflationary. So let's just say that life only goes up 10%, which is probably you know, more realistic, but maybe even on the low side, it's probably more than that. But let's just say it continues to go up 10% year over year. Okay. The average person right now, it's not that they can barely hang on in life. They can't hang on in life anymore. Yeah. You, know, you got one out of six households that can't afford utility payments anymore. You got 25,000 daily auto repos taking place every single day. When you look at the expansion of consumer debt right now and, and the dissolving of consumer savings, like people are only, it has this appearance of hanging on because they just continue to expand debt. Yeah. Right. But that's that, that, that dance can only go on for so long. Yeah. Right. But people are just getting wrecked right now. Like you remove real estate from it and the affordability of real estate, even though that's crazy right now, but just, if we look at just life, dude, people are having such a tough time affording life. You know, now we've got also massive increase in job layoffs um, and job losses in 2024, I, you know, we'll, we'll, we, this is yet to be seen, but I think 2024 is going to be the big year that we start seeing a shit ton of job losses. Now, if you want to do something really interesting, go back and look at the last 36 months of, of, of the job report numbers and look at how many times those are revised and, and not just revised once, not just revised twice. You know, sometimes a multitude of times beyond that, like just go back and like, look at those and see how many times they're revised. So when we get fed this data, right, it's not really usually a true accurate picture of the economy. So I guess where I'm going here without going too in depth with all of this stuff um, is that the economy is in a fucking mess. 
right? And so it's, it's, it, people are having a very difficult time. So even if we remove the affordability of real estate from it, just with the, the, the lack of affordability of life, people are having a very difficult time. So we got life going up and up and up, even if real estate starts getting a little bit more affordable, but everything, all the essentials in life continues to skyrocket like they are. Okay, yeah, it'd be nice that interest rates are coming down and maybe that gets a little bit of relief, but when life is skyrocketing up and up and up and there's no relief coming from that, even if we get a little bit of relief on the real estate side because of interest rates, right? Well, those kind of counterbalance each other, you know, right? Or 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 don't, you know, so, so I'm not convinced that we're going to have all this a flood of all these buyers that have been sitting on the uh, the sidelines, you know, because their affordability, their purchasing power of real estate is is getting wiped out because of life just getting so much more expensive and in the stagflationary environment. So incomes are not at all keeping up with the cost of life. So what stagflation is right. Um, um, then from there, as we have more layoffs taking place, you know, because I mean, if you look at what's going on, a lot of these job report numbers that we're having is people are having record numbers of second jobs and third jobs just to afford freaking life. Yeah, right. Um, so it's craziness out there. We're again, if you're paying attention to this, probably all seeing this in our our lives. Now, I know for you and I in real estate, we're very blessed, right? Because we are in a position where we can control our incomes. If life is going up 10% a year or year over year, you just got to make sure that your real estate business is growing by 10% year over year and you've hedged inflation. Better yet, make sure your real estate business is going up 15 or 20% year over year and you beat out inflation. Well, most people aren't blessed to be in a career path like you and I, where we can control our incomes. So keeping that in mind. All right. So then from there, you know, um, um, so th those are kind of just some high level reasons as to why I'm not convinced on this. And again, I don't have a crystal ball. You know, you can choose to listen to me, not listen to me. You can you know, hope that that's going to take place. And, and look, and I'm not going to say that. I hope it doesn't either. I hope that, you know, um, um, somehow some relief comes and there's more affordability. And I hate seeing, you know, the, the lack of affordability for real, real estate and people not being able to partake in the American dream. And, you know, um, um, I'm not a fan of seeing, you know, th this stuff either. Um, but with that, I am not, banking on all of a sudden these interest rates coming down and not fixing the problems because the problems are wide and the problems are deep. Right. So then from there though, as I mentioned earlier, like what do we do to prep for this? What do we do to go out there and ensure? Because look, we can't wait for shit to get different. It's just here's the situation that we are in. Yeah, so it's like a, a poker player, right? Like here's the cards that have been dealt. How do I best go play these cards to go out there and 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 you know crush your goals and and Go out there and create success regardless. Look, you have a family you got to provide opportunities for. You got a livelihood that you got to make. We can't wait for shit to change. We just must change our approach, our strategy um, um, based on the situation that we're in so we can go out there and continue to grow, scale, and thrive and, and go out there and create opportunities for ourselves and for our family. So my recommendation over and I'm going to get into, again, what to do here, but my recommendation is don't wait for shit to change. Make the adjustments that you need to make right now so you can go out there and continue growing your real estate business because who knows how long we're going to be in this climate for. Could be you know three years, five years, 10 years. I don't know. We might This might be the new norm for a long freaking time. I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. You know, right? So, so then from there, it would then make the most sense to just adjust our way of operation to go out there and kick ass in the climate that we are in. Okay, so with that, there are three things I want to talk to. Well, I guess four things that I want to talk to you about here. Okay, number one, and this is this is why people's business is down right now, right? And that might be you, but, but I'm going to go through the biggest reasons as to why people's business is down in our industry right now. And when I say down right now, I'm talking about currently 2023, going into 2024, why, you know, like versus, you know, 2020, 2021, 20, you know, whatever. And it's not, it's not because of interest rates. It's because they haven't made the necessary adjustments. Okay, so these are the adjustments that you got to make. Number one is you got to switch from playing defense to playing offense. Look, 2012 through middle 2022, longest bull market recorded history, longest economic expansion recorded history, longest uh, um, um, real estate expansion recorded history. You can kind of show up. You can kind of work hard. You can kind of be consistent, go out there and make multiple six figures in this business. That was just easy street. Easy street is over. You already know that by now, yeah, right? Um, uh, uh, but so many people got so damn accustomed to playing defense and going out there and doing pretty damn good. And the, the, the number one reason as to why I'm seeing people's business down right now, whether that be 10%, 20%, 30%, I'm meeting with a lot of realtors and teams right now and brokerages that their business is at 40, 50, 60, sometimes 70%, right? And, and when we're looking at that, the number one reason is they're still playing defense and they haven't switched to offense. What does that mean? 
Que defense says, I'm waiting for business to come to me. I'm being passive. I'm waiting for business to come to me. I'm waiting for repeat referral business to come to me. Oh man, I built my business, you know, off all these referrals. I got this great sphere of influence. I had, you know, right. And, and these are the people I've seen gotten, gotten caught the most is that we're just, you know, built up this great book of business, which was awesome. You know, I right? built this great book of business, a repeat referral business that they're able just to rely on was feed them a lot of deals for a long time. And, 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 you know, 50% asked right up and, and now they're like, well, what do I do? And they still haven't pivoted to again, playing offense, which again, I would do a little bit more of a deep dive in this. Now I'm not saying to abandon your past clients for influence. No, keep working that. Yeah. Right. Like well, this too shall pass, right? We're going to keep working that. I'm working all those things too. I'm never going to drop the ball on that. I just understand that that business, if transaction volume is down 40, 50, 60% of your market, if we've omitted and eliminated 40, 50, 60% of the general public that you typically could partake in the real estate market from being able to partake in the real estate market right now, yeah, it makes perfect sense as to why your repeat referral business, SOI business would be down 40, 50, 60% as well. Yeah, right now I'm going to continue working that. And I recommend that you do as well as with that. But we cannot, we cannot have just a defensive strategy, right? Again, don't abandon that. Keep working that. But then from there, you've got to pivot to offense. What do I mean by offense? We're not waiting for shit to come to us. We're going to it, right? So with offensive, what am I doing intentionally each and every single day to put deals together? I'm not waiting for anything to come to me. I'm going to make sure that my primary strategies in my business during this time are offensive, not defensive, right? So example, I'm having a conversation the other day with somebody and we're talking about strategy. I'm like, yeah, going after divorces, you know, for listings in this market is a great niche right now. It's always been a good niche, but in this market, especially because you're know, during hard economic times, divorces go up that much more. So I'm like, yeah, that's a great strategy to target for listings right now in this marketplace. Plus it's not very saturated with like expires and fizzbos is heavily saturated. I'm like, yeah, it's a great niche. Go after that niche too in this market. Right. But then they ask me, they're like, okay, well, should I go after attorneys? I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's a good, that's a good approach, but that wouldn't be my primary approach going after, going after those going through divorce. Right. Cause again, that's pat or that's defense. That's passive. That's me sitting back waiting for an attorney to feed me business. So think about that. That is defense wait, sitting back and waiting for business to come to you is you playing defense. Right. So I'm like, and I'm not saying to not go to establish those relationships, but what I'm saying is your primary strategies need to be offensive, meaning, okay, I'm going to go get the divorce list. People going through divorce. I'm going to call them directly. I'm not waiting for an attorney to refer me my business. Does that mean that I'm not nurturing those relationships? No, I am just like, I'm still nurturing my past client repeat referral SOI relationships to get that business too. But my primary objectives, my primary strategies are going to be offensive. So I'm going direct to source and I'm doing it directly. Okay. What can I control to put deals together? And I'm not waiting for things to come to me. That is playing offense. So step number one here is you got to switch from defense to offense and make sure that you have the right offensive strategies in place. Okay. That brings me to point number two here is strategy, right? So we got offense. So we're, we're playing offense, not defense. Now let's talk about the strategy shift that you must uh, uh, switch into when it comes to, you know, a deal acquisition, client acquisition, right? So how do we go out there and this is how we go out there and get business, right? We got to operate as a sniper, not a shotgun. So by sniper, I mean, okay, in this market, when you have half the number of listings, half the number of transactions, three X, the amount of realtors, you know, when we, so we're back down to 95 transaction levels, but three X the amount of realtors, we've never seen this competitive landscape. You know, right. Um, so then from there, all that low hanging fruits dried up, right? So we got to go after those that need to buy and sell, not those that want to buy and sell. This is what I'm talking about as a sniper. We're going to operate like we're a sniper with a sniper scope. I'm being laser toward on who who has the highest probability of needing my services to buy and sell in this marketplace. So let's just, you know, give examples with, with sellers right now. Okay. I'm not going to go out there and circle prospect in this market. Those are, those are people that might want to sell, but they don't need to sell. I'm going to be laser target on those that need to sell. Okay. You got expired FISBOs. We don't know, you know, that we don't know their exact need, their exact pain points, but they've raised their hands that they want and need to sell in this market. Then from there, okay, I've got absentee owners, lots of pain. And I'm not going to go into the reasons in, into why these are great niches, but you can just take my word for it here. But if I'm going to go out there and play an offensive strategy to go out there and stack as many listings as I possibly can, here's the five niches hitting best in this market. Fizbos, expireds, absentee owners, pre-foreclosures, divorces. 
right? Those are all people. That's me being laser focused with those that have the highest probability of needing to sell in this marketplace, right? So, okay, we got, we're, now we're playing offensive strategy, but then with our strategy, we're playing sniper, not shocker. We're not scattering shit out, you know, right? Because there's abundance of people that want to buy and sell that would like to buy and sell, but are unwilling or unable to because of the economic climate that we are in. We need to target those that need to buy and sell in this marketplace. Okay, so then from there, we got strategy. Then we got your process. You got to dial in your process, man. Your process, you because we got to maximize conversions in this marketplace. All that low-hanging fruit is dried up. So you got to make sure that you've got the best. So strategy is targeting, again, like who we're targeting that has the highest probability of buying or selling in the marketplace. S process is how long, how frequent, how much that we must follow up and go after that 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 prospect or that lead source to maximize conversions. So we got to make sure we got the right process in place. Like again, they, they, and I call this the three-legged stool, right? So when we when I'm talking about, so we got process, we got strategy, process, skill set. The reason why I call it a three-legged stool is if you got three legs on a stool and you remove a three-legged stool, a leg off a three-legged stool, that son of a bitch falls over. So if you don't have all three of these things in, dialed in, now we got to play offense with these three things, right? So, you know, um, um, but so that's kind of the cornerstone of the stool. Maybe that's the top of the stool, right? But then you got the three legs, strategy, process, skill set. If you're missing one of these, you're going to have low conversions in this market and you're going to experience pain. So we got to make sure you got the right strategy. Then from there, we got to have the right process. Then the third component of this is you got to have the right skill set. So skill set is how good we are at doing the things that we are doing. This is okay. Like, okay, let's just say, okay, I've got the, you know, let's just say I'm going after absentee owners, right? So that would be the strategy, right? So now I'm going to have an offensive strategy to them. That's me reaching out to them direct, not waiting for them to come to me. I'm going out to them direct. So that'd be my offensive strategy. Okay. Then my process is, okay, well, how frequently am I following up with them to go out there and maximize those conversions? So what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, where I'm doing it, how I'm doing it, right? And then my skill set is, how effective am I at having those effective conversations to go out there and convert those into appointments and then convert those appointments into clients, right? So your, your skill set is, you know, like, okay, my process is, let's just say, okay, I'm going after an expired, right? And I know that, okay, the average expired, 10% of expireds relist in the first 90 days, 90% relist between month four and that two year, two year time frame. So, okay, it makes sense then that I have a process that goes out for two years, you know, right? Or it, that isn't just like the first week, right? Like if I want to maximize and optimize on conversions to get the highest conversion rate, then my skill set is how good am I when I actually get them on the phone? How good am I at navigating those conversations, at identifying those root core concerns, root core objections, navigating through that? Because here's what's going to happen. If you're not good at this shit, you're going to get, you know, what do you hear from, what's the number one objective or objection that you hear from expires? Oh, we decided to hold off. Then all of a sudden, two weeks later, you realize they listed with somebody that does have a great skill set like myself that can navigate those conversations, right? So skill set is just how good are you at doing the thing that you are doing? So how good we are with the conversations, how good we are with the objection handling, how good we are with our appointment setting, how good we are with our listing presentations, our buyer presentations, right? Like how good are we at doing the things that we are doing? So you got to make sure that these three, these three things are coming together that three-legged stool, these are the three things that you must hone in on, be a professional in this market. Otherwise, you are going to load you low, very low conversions. And look, here's the great, here's the blessing of this. And here's why this current market is amazing for those of you that are truly committed and serious about leveling up in this industry. Is the vast majority of our industry, when I say the vast majority, well over 90%, just operate as amateurs. They just wing it. They're never going to put any intent, in, intention into this stuff. So it is like fishing with dynamite. Right now, I am seeing the highest conversions I have ever seen in my 20 years of doing this business on pretty much every lead source. Like I've never seen anything like this. And, I, and things I never thought I'd see with expired, physical, like I never thought I would see this high of conversions. And why is that? Because the vast majority of our industry, their skill set is so low. Right, they're they're they operate as amateurs, not professionals. So they're not going to take the time to dial this stuff in, dial in their process, dial in their skill set. People come to me all the time, like, "Oh, expires of business so saturated." I'm like, "Yeah, you know, do you have 30, 40, 50 other agents in your market reaching out to these people? Yeah, but is is it really competition? Really that saturated? No, 
we start factoring how low level the people's skill set is, how bad their process is, how bad this shit is. It is like fishing with dynamite once you hone these things in. But if you don't hone these things in, you're going to be the amateurs like everybody else that are just getting your teeth kicked in each and every single day. Right. So be a true professional, go master these things, get these things dialed in. And I promise you, you will crush it. This industry You don't need to wait for this market to change because you might be waiting for a long, long, long freaking time. We do not know how long this is going to be here for. So you might as well change yourself and change your own skills, change your own approach, your own strategies versus waiting for the market to change to turn your business around. Right. Um, that would make a lot more sense, at least in my humble opinion. So anyway, I hope that this is helpful. And again, you guys, if you are struggling with any of this stuff, if you're struggling in your real estate business, look, and maybe your business is, is growing, just not growing at the pace that you want it to grow at. And you just do not know exactly what you need to do to get from where you're at to where it is that you want to go. So I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, look, that's why I'm doing these free coaching calls. 100% free, one hour long Zoom coaching call with you and me. I promise you, I will get you dialed in. I got your back. I'm going to eliminate all that confusion all that guesswork, I will get you dialed in. I will make sure that you know exactly what to do to get from where you're at to where it is that you want to go in the quickest, most effective, uh, efficient, profitable manner possible. So if that's something you want to take advantage of, go to www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. All right, guys, keep crushing it. Truly appreciate your support and we'll see you next time. Peace.